uh, history statement. So the differences are the statement of purpose focuses on the why you would choose the university, why you would choose the the research topic, why would you choose the the department? But the personal history statement is more about your background, your family, your uh, how you value life, how, what success means to you, what failures, how do you overcome your failure, things like that. It's about your experience. And you can check out more at the uh, website. Uh, you just can Google it uh, later. And this is my capstone project. Uh, it's about molybdenum disulfide, then film deposition using slot dye coating in low temperature. So, uh, MOS2 itself is a, a, a transition metal for a, a semiconductor. But then there's many applications of the MOS2, like battery, like supercapacitor, fuel cell, or solar panel, and other things. Uh, my fo focus is not on the MOS2 uh, synthesis, but more of a, making it available for a scale up uh, industry. So as you can see in the middle part, that's, that's the schematic of slot die coding. Uh, if you know like a, a paper printer, it's basically the same thing. Instead of ink, they release a, a semiconductor thin film on a substrate. And also I happen to be given a task which is to simulate the slot die coding using a console simulation. So uh, at the simulation, I could know like uh, what is the right uh, property of the ink of the solution so that I can achieve the thin film, uh, uniform thin film on the substrate. And about the MOS2 uh, material itself, I think uh, Evan could uh, explain it better than me. So yeah, I'll give it to Evan later. And then how about the scholarship? Uh, I got an LPDP scholarship uh, last year. And uh, basically I just copied the requirement here uh, in the, from the website. But what I want to highlight is that uh, you can get the scholarship with or without the letter of acceptance. So basically, uh, at some point, when you want to go to the graduate school, you need a letter of acceptance from the university. But then LPDP it, uh, doesn't need one. Uh, if you don't have the letter of acceptance, it's OK. You can apply for the LPDP. Uh, if you do have a letter of acceptance, it will help you even more in LPDP. But the thing is, uh, 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 you have to know like where is your level at. Like, if you're close to the uh, LPDP admission application, so you better get that first. But if you have uh, the university admission in front of you, uh, get it first before the LPDP. So let's see like uh, where's your status at and which of the admission come first. Yeah, so then uh, also I, I need to highlight about LPDP is uh, because it's from a government scholarship. It's from uh, the Ministry of Finance. And it's from the people tax of Indonesian people tax payer. So you need to go back after you finish your program at the uh, university abroad. So I think that's something that we need to be aware of. Yeah. But then there's a, if you got a internship after the program, you could also do the internship, but you have to ask for permission first to the LPDP or the, the government. So it's still be allowed if you want to get extra experience after the program. So yeah, 
if you want to consider LPDP, I think it's a very, very generous uh, a scholarship. So yeah, I I think uh, you can ask more thing uh, about my experience uh, later on in the Q and A session. But here's the uh, thing that I want to share to you, like I want to highlight. Is first is to practice your English skills. Like if even though like you don't go to university, I I think English skills very needed in in nowadays, like in industry and and everything. Like yeah. If you go to the, uh, you, you don't want to go to the US or the UK, you still need English skills to communicate with other people. And also next part is to know what you like and dislike. It is a very, very important thing if you want to go uh, to a master degree or like doctoral because uh, you're gonna commit your time to it and you have to know like uh, if your undergrad was like a mechanical engineering student, but you don't like it. So then don't pursue a degree uh, continuing mechanical engineering, but instead do other, another thing that you like. For me, I, I like material science. So I, I'll continue doing it as a master degree. Uh, and yeah, so what I want to highlight is yeah, you have to know what you like or what you dislike about life. You have to know yourself and also uh, have the courage to try. So yeah, don't be afraid of uh, applying to a top university because it will be worth it. I mean, like you got the network, you get the experience. You have, uh, uh, don't be afraid of the title of, oh, it's a top university. I, I'm afraid that I wouldn't be accepted. Don't be like that. Just, just apply. And you, you'll never regret it. And also, uh, do a thorough research on your next step. Uh, be uh, develop your strategy. Like, if if you know what you like, you know, uh, you seems like you know the next university you want to come. Uh, do research on the university. Do the research on the group. Uh, group research on professor on the coursework on the topic so you know that uh, it is the right match for you and also that uh, you can prepare more like oh they need a battery uh, knowledge so you could uh, prepare it beforehand and have a, a better acceptance rate to that research group and also the last part is your network is your net worth. So be sincere and kind. What I mean by this is eventually, if you want to go uh, abroad, you need recommendations letter. And if you could make a, a great network uh, and they want to make a recommend recommendation, it's a good thing because uh, they see the admission uh, department from the university would see like who's recommending you to be a graduate student. Is it like some someone powerful in the university? Is it your advisor? Are you close to someone uh, who's uh, experienced enough in, in the academic uh, world? Things like that. But don't forget to be sincere and uh, don't just take advantage of people. It's, it's kind of mean. So yeah, be sincere and kind in 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 uh, networking. I guess that's all from me, and I'm welcome to you all if you have any questions. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Andika. Such insightful information for us to gain our scholarship in uh, in a broad study broad, and we know that Mr. Andika is um. Master, uh, Master of Engineering in Material Science in the University of California and also get LPDP scholarship, which is a prestigious scholarship in Indonesia. And Mr. Adika just said that um, tips and tricks or how to get the scholarship to get uh, go into the top university in the world is practice your English skill. And so have the court to try, don't afraid of uh, failing, just try and do research on your next um, step, do research and do 
uh, find what you're passionate the most and gain your network. And also, if you want to get LPDP scholarship, and um, we need to commit. I mean, like, uh, we need to commit and doing what uh, you like and find what you like, what, what you're um, passionate the most and develop your best strategy and learn from the expert, the expert and just keep going. Yes, go for it. And that's it. So we're gonna uh, move to our second speaker, but the Q&A is uh, after the second speaker. Is it okay, Randika? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're head to Mr. Nicholas Evan Rinaldo ST. Yeah. Mr. Nicholas is Miss, um, or we call it Mr. Evan, Miss Bachelor of Engineering and Materials Engineering Institute Technology, Bandung. And now currently Master of Science in Aerospace Materials in Cranfield University in the UK. And Mr. Nicholas also awarded 5,000 sponsoring scholarship yeah, yeah. by grade scholarship by British Council towards Master of Science Institution fees at Cranfield University. And also, Mr. Evan awarded uh, uh, 8,600 sponsoring scholarship, which are uh, from MME scholarship by Cranfield Manufacturing towards Master of Science Institution fee. <laughs> Okay, and then in collaboration with Cranville University and Iconic Group LTD with the project Thesis Battery, uh, entitled Next Generation High Capacity Multivalent Batteries. Okay, Mr. Evan, the spotlight is yours. Thank you, Mr. Evan, for introducing me. Please uh, let me share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yeah, that's clear. Okay, all right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Professor Effi. Good morning, Ms. Refina, Dika, and all of the participants. Thank you for having me here to give a talk about how to become a great petri scientist by a Getty scholarship. So let me introduce myself in a brief. My, my name is Nicolaus Evan Rinaldo. My friends called me Evan, and I take uh, I get my bachelor's degree in material science and engineering in ETP. I just graduated last year in 2021. Then I decided to continue my study master's degree. So I took aerospace materials at Cranfield University UK, and I just finished my thesis defense last month. So while I was doing my master's degree, I got two scholarships, like what Ms. Ravina has already explained. The first one is from the British Council. I got great scholarship. And then I also got manufacturing center from manufacturing center at Cranfield University, and I got manufacturing materials excellence scholarship. So uh, although I did although I didn't have any background on battery uh, on battery related field before, but I have a great interest in battery field right now. So when and where did my interest in battery field start? Actually, it all started in Cranfield University here. For you guys, maybe perhaps you don't know about Cranfield University before because Cranfield University only has postgraduate study and also doctoral program. But however, Cranfield University is top 50 in the world for engineering, mechanical, and aeronautical manufacturing, and also number five in the UK for engineering, mechanical, and aeronautical, and also manufacturing based on QS World Rank. And actually, Cranfield University is very special in aircraft research because they have their own taxi runway, their house, they, they have their own aircraft, Boeing 737, SAAB 340, they have their own air service as well. So they are very special in aerospace area. So let me tell you a bit story, a bit, a bit funny story. At the time, I was so fascinated to get research in the aerospace area because I, at the time, I look at Boeing 787 that is composed 80% of the composite. And it, it just get me interested to get research in the composite things. So that's why I also, I chose Cranfield University for my master's. So in Cranfield, but in Cranfield University at the time, my study was divided into three parts. The first one is four months of lectures. In this lectures, look, I, I, I still remember one of the lectures taught me about the, the future uh, the, the future of electric propulsion plane. 
you know, because electric, the, the current state of art of technology cannot support the flight with carrying passengers only for a short haul flight. It cannot support the it cannot support the aircraft. But however, for 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 a comparison, let's say Boeing seven four seven, Boeing seven four seven, with carrying three hundred thirty three passengers, only consumes a fuel of sixty tons for a flight of five thousand kilometers. So we, it's it's clear that we need an excellent performance battery and. The battery is strongly needed to support electric aircraft. And nowadays, people are talking about an electric vehicle as well. So battery will support every aspect of our life. It's, it's really, really clear. So to help the world to combat, to help the world to combat carbon emission, to faster, to accelerate the transition to be a green energy world, we need to be, we need to have better support of the battery. That's my main uh, drive to get research in battery field. So in fourth format of lectures, I changed my interest from doing of composites to really completely get completely jump into battery field. And after I finished this format of lectures, there was a four months of group project. So it was a, it was a moment when I need to decide what kind of project that I will do. So in those four months of group project, I chose a project related to battery field that was being sponsored by a company called Econic in the UK. So I got real problems that was brought by the company and he taught me and what, what, was, what was his request. And I need to do the research based on, based on what's the main problem in the industries right now. And after I did my four months of group project, I also continue my project with the Econic. So I brought my previous research to be my thesis as well and change from doing about electrolyte. And, and then I did about, uh, for my thesis, I did about cathode side. So my main aim was accelerating the transition towards zero carbon world. That's the main, my main goal to be involved in this battery. But by having this big aim, there are a lot of numerous opportunities that is open for us. For example, because I studied in the UK, so I know some startups companies that's concentrating on the battery technologies like British Fault, Econic, Faradion, they are based in the UK, Freyer, Beyonder, Moro, they are based in Norway, Nordfall, they are based in Sweden, Leiden Jar, they are based uh, in Netherlands. And all of them are being was, was established in 2018. And with there's with plenty of opportunities to work in this company as well. So there are a lot of funded PhD opportunities open for us too. And I would say that I'm not experts at the battery related field because I just jumped into this area for the last eight months. And I will tell you about my research, a bit of my research. So for my group project, I studied about solid state electrolyte for battery beyond lithium ion. You can see the right hand side of your screen, the top part. I took it from uh, the papers that I cited because I'm, I'm really sorry. I cannot, I cannot show you the, the real pictures of my research because I was, uh, I, I guess I already signed the non-disclosure agreement with this, with the, with the company. But generally speaking, this is the, uh, solid state electrolyte that I made, it looks like that. And for the second part, for my thesis, I did a high capacity cutout for battery beyond lithium ion. And uh, at, at your right hand side of your screen, you can see as well a black sheet. It, it made of uh, TMDC materials, which is synthesized by physical vapor deposition. And the, the, the aim for this project was uh, making a vertically aligned structures for the cathode part of batteries beyond lithium ion. So I would say that if you have decided to jump into battery field, and also maybe you are now in the contemplating state to take a battery research things, that I will show you one example if you, if you want to have a full-time job in this battery related field. Uh, I would say that this on the example, you, you don't have to follow this, but this is based on my experience. So I will say this is the one this is the first example from I got it from Northfold website. One skills and requirements is we believe that you have a master's and PhD degree in engineering. 
and you also need to have two or more years of experience within the cathod materials. So it's clear that having a master's or even PhD degree will be so beneficial for this area. The second one from the other company, from Freyer Battery Company, they also need a master's or PhD degree. And they also need three or more years in lithium ion cell design. And you know, you know that it is very important to have the experience or maybe having the master or PhD. The third one, a company called Dyson, you know, you, you know what Dyson is, right? And they also need a master's in engineering or physical science, like those sort of things. And also it requires you to have a minimum five years of experience. So it's, it's, a, it's a long period of experience, I know. And even because there are, there are lots of startup companies, they also, they, they also uh, in, a, in a race with other companies to develop a, well, a good performance of the batteries. So they also open a vacation, they open a vacant positions like for industrial PhD, like this, I got it from Beyonder in a company in Norway. So having a master or PhD degree in this related area is very beneficial for your future career, I would say. Uh, so if you have decided to take this path, if you want to take a full-time job, maybe you want to start preparing from now because you know, like having a three years or more experience or having five years or more experience is a long period of time. The, bit, the, the earlier you start, it's better. So if you are maybe uh, just graduate or maybe want to take a job, want to have a job in a battery related field, you can, you can start with doing an internship research assistant. This is the example. I got it from my friend. He is now a study in KAIST with a full scholarship as well. When he did his internship, he did in, in a leap and he was doing a project about an RGO based anode for high energy density lithium ion battery. You can start your project by doing an internship in a company or maybe being a research assistant in the lab or maybe doing an internship in NPRI as well. I got it from the NPRI website. And after you improve, after you have enough experience, hands-on experience in the lab, maybe you also want to do masters because uh, right now many companies requires masters for you to get a full-time job. These are the examples of the master study that you can do. Actually, there are some universities that open MSc course in the battery related field. I give some examples in Southampton, in Uppsala, in Beirut, in, in Germany, from DAAD, and even a combination from two universities. So you can graduate from two universities uh, by like the, the link in number fifth. And also in several countries, you, you need to do the research about the lab despite of the university like the South Korea. I get this information from my friend who is studying in South Korea. And he said, if you want to do a master in South Korea, you need to do the research about the lab first. And this web, he gave me this website, psdkim.net. And you can, see, you can see the review about the lab, whether they are opening for new positions, whether they have a vacant positions for right now and what, what do they need. You can open it from this link. And if you have a great desire to pursue a PhD, there are also plenty of PhD opportunities out there. You can find it by these two links. This is the, this tool is usually the link that we use there. And you can see there are great Patrice PhD opportunities out there that is fully funded. You can, you, you can be well paid. It's, it's very sufficient fun as well. It's, it's very interesting to be honest. So if you have decided to jump into this battery related field, you need to define your motivation first for taking master study because it will take the longest time for you to contemplate what is your motivation for taking master study, whether you want to be a great doctor in the battery field, you're the great battery scientist, whether you want to be an industrial professional working for a company, whether you want to be a faculty member that uh, also prioritize novelty, or maybe you want to help the world compete combat carbon emission because I really have a friend. She is really into battling, combat, battling, battling the carbon emission and she loves also uh, uh, sustainability. And that's the reason, that's the main drive that why she wants to develop the battery by herself. So she took a PhD program because she has a great desire to help the world combat the carbon emissions. It's, it's funny, but it's real. So if you guys have already 
uh, decided that you want to pursue a master's, so first tips that I can give you guys is find out what you want to achieve. You need to have you need to have a great motivation and you need to find out what you want to achieve in the future. Why, why I say this? Because you need to have an exact and personal reasons. You need to have aim on something and you at, at least you need you have a plan what to do in the future. Like based on my experience, there are several universities that perform really, really well at producing a great scientist, for example, by preparing you to publish several papers as well. And there are also other universities that prepares you to be a professional, uh, to be industrial professionals. And they have also a good a great connection with the, with, the, with the companies and industries as well. So once you graduate from the university, you can get a job right away because they have a great connection and you can do research with them by funded by a company. For example, uh, the, the university that I, I studied in Cranfield. And the second one, Push, you need to push your browsing intensity to get scholarship. There might not be a single place where you can find all the information that you are looking for. So you need to do plenty of research so you so you will know a lot of so you will find a lot of sources like organizational pages, campus pages, even Instagram now and LinkedIn. A bit a bit funny story when I uh, apply for a scholarship at the time, I keep browsing scholarships in my instagrams so the instagram ads changed at the time they keep showing me a, 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 another another universities another scholarships another uh, open opportunities for me so so you can so your effort can get something and number three you need to check out the eligibility and timeline don't forget to check your eligibility and be careful because some eligibility requirements across different scholarships will be uh, will not be the same you need to pay attention to the detail and spend time on the scholarships that you are eligible to do it. For example, if you only have one year of experience, while well, the scholarship that you are applying to needs you to have five years of experience, it's clear that you don't have the right you don't have the eligibility to do that. Don't waste your time to apply for it. But if you are eligible for it, just go, just really go for it. Don't think about anything. Just go and apply. And you also need to consider the timeline as well. You need to plan. When will you finish your study? And when is the deadline for the scholarship? When is the deadline for applying to the universities? And when is the starting date for the course? You need to you, you need to pay attention at the timeline first, whether you have a sufficient time or not. If you have a sufficient time, that then just go for it. And then number four, what I can say is just write tailored application. This is why. The tips for the first the, the first tip that I give you is to find out what you want to achieve because really contemplating takes most of my time. I need to see why I want to do this. And I need to see what's my future plan, why this scholarship can help me a lot in the future. So you can write a tailored application because you if you make a real effort to understand, uh, the, the result will come at the end. And then number fifth, is oh sorry and number fifth you might want to you might want to have a proofreaders maybe it coming from your friends or your supervisors because i i often i often experience this when i didn't realize about my fault my about my fault that my friends told me you cannot do it maybe having a proofreader from your friends or your supervisor will tell you which one that you can improve even 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 though you have already felt like oh my justification letter is perfect nothing can be changed sometimes your friend and your supervisor can find a little bit failure a little bit fall and a little bit part that you can improve so it can make your application better i will i would say that you need to find maybe three friends and one supervisors to get a good justification letter for your application and number six really just go for it if you are eligible, if you have sufficient time, if you have already made the application, just go for it. Don't think about anything else. Because when I learned the possibility of being a great scholar, I thought there was a very small chance that I would get it. But I decided, like, if I didn't try, how would I know? The why not was my main driver. I know that it's normal to think that uh, there are many people who are more deserving of certain opportunities and certain awards, but you might be surprised, really. 
So just go for it. And number six, if you are now a student in the fifth or sixth semester or even a fresh graduate, this is the right time. This is the perfect time to decide your future career path. You need to get prepared and get ready and focus on what you want. Because the experience that you, were, you, you are doing now can support your scholarship application by doing related lab work. And you can even start your certification letter with this sort of story. So the more experience you get in the fifth, while well, you are being undergrad student, or even you are a fresh grad, you can do an internship, you can do uh, being a research assistant after you graduate, it will help a lot in your, in, in, uh, in your scholarship application. And one thing that I want to say is there are plenty of scholarships out there. Believe me, there are plenty of scholarships out there. The common ones that perhaps we all know, maybe Schiffening, Fulbright, Global Korea Scholarship, Australia World Scholarship, what else? Swedish Institute Scholarship, and sort of the sort, sort of scholarship that is very famous. But well, there are plenty of scholarships out there that we might, we, 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 that we maybe we don't know. What I want to say, these are the evidence that show several scholarships that's, that are not common for us. Those are my friends, those are, those are my uh, undergraduate friends, my classmates, you can see 2017, and they got a uh, different scholarship. One of my friends got Hyundai Motor Chung Mung Ko, Kaos Fellowship, scholarship from Politico Milan, Invest Your Talent Italy. Those are plenty of scholarship out there that might wait for you to apply for. You just need to browse, you just need to increase, it, uh, just need to push your browsing intensity to get to know what kind of scholarship is open now and you might be eligible to, to, to uh, apply for it, really. Just go for it. And based on, and based on my experience from Instagram, really, they, they, they just uh, change their Instagram ads. Uh, they, just, they just change their Instagram ads. So when you, when you browse for a scholarship, when you browse for an available scholarship, they will keep showing you. So your Instagram will not filled by TikTok videos, will not filled by another videos, but it's, it's all filled by uh, open application to uh, what university is it's open application for scholarships. It's, it, will be, it will be filled by useful informations there. Okay, I think that's all I want to share right now. Thank you for listening to me.